from the rising of the sun even unto the going down of the same. My name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering. For thy name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. <clears throat> we have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. open thou our lips, and our, our mouth, mouth shall, shall proclaim, proclaim thy praise. Thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. Be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord hath manifested forth his glory. O come, let us adore him. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lambs. Serve, Serve the, the Lord with gladness. gladness. And, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. Is God. It, it is he that hath made us, not, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his, his mercy is everlasting, and, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. generation. The Lord the hath manifested forth his glory. glory. O oh, come, come, let, let us adore, adore him. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10, as found in the bulletin or on page 632 in the Book of Common Prayer. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O oh Lord. How priceless is your love, O oh God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For it is with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of your heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Please join in reciting Canticle 2 as found in your bulletin or on page 49 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed art thou, O Lord, Lord God, God our fathers, fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praised and exalted above all forever. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of t activities, but is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kind of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in reciting Canticle 3, as found in your bulletin or on page 50 of the Book of Common Prayer. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, 
He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Lord Lord Jesus Christ according to John. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were some six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Each of our Gospels handles beginnings differently. Mark starts right in with Jesus and John the Baptist. Matthew and Luke tell us stories of Joseph and Mary learning about this child that they're going to uh, give birth to and raise and be responsible for. John talks about the Word before all of it. That God's creative Word is the one who is made flesh in Jesus. However, it is interesting to note that in John's Gospel, the signs are really the going public of Jesus in his role as the Word of God made flesh. And I find it fascinating that just as Matthew and Luke tell us the story of Jesus, starting with Mary, in John, Mary starts his public ministry. I think that's really interesting. And I think it's fascinating, too, that it's a wedding. I think there's a lot to be said about that. In the prayer book wedding liturgy, in the prologue to the wedding, the wonderful line is, Jesus adorned, note that word, adorned, adorned this manner of life 
by his presence and first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus adorns a celebration. I think that's significant. I think that we get so caught up in the work of our lives, in the work of just surviving. And some of us perhaps get caught up in the work of advancing in our faith. But Mary understands a connection between her son, the Word made flesh, and celebration. She knows it's time for him to begin at a celebration. Because the Word made flesh is an occasion for celebrating. It is the occasion in which God chooses to gather up all of human life and make it part of God's own life. That's an occasion for celebration. And it is important for us to remember that celebration is not just having a good party. It's not being frivolous. That celebration is an important part of spiritual life. <clears throat> our faith advances certainly through our intentionality, certainly through our hard work, but it also advances through our celebration. Jesus adorns this manner of life at a wedding. If you were cynical, you could almost say adorning a celebration is a little like gilding the lily. But it's more than that. The ability to celebrate is the ability to have an open heart. The other thing that Mary either understands or intuits is that the work that her son will do is all about relationship. It's about people discovering that they have a loving relationship with God. It's about people discovering that Jesus and God are one, and they are one with Jesus, and therefore one with God. It makes sense here near the beginning of the gospel. We start at a wedding, which is all about relationship. And towards the end of the gospel, when Jesus prays and asks for our salvation, we get that long prayer of Jesus that's so full of prepositions. I'm in them and you're in me and all the rest. That's all about relationship. Those two events point to the meaning of everything in between. That we can be one with God and one with each other. Again, the prayer book gets it exactly right in the catechism when it says the mission of the church is to restore all people to union with God and each other in Christ. It's all about the relationship. And we can't know if Mary remembers the piece of Isaiah that we heard this morning and thinks, well, this is God's restora restoration of Israel. It's a relationship. It's a marriage. And my son is all about that? Or if she just felt it was right? We don't know. But we do know when we hear this text, Mary got him started. She got him started 
when she gave birth to him. She got him started when she had him perform his first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And in that beginning, Jesus adorns all our life with the glorious reality of our relationship to each other and to God. It is certainly a cause for celebration. Please join in reciting the Apostles' Creed as found in your bulletin or on page 53 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine heritage. Govern them, and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us. As our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, Grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance, of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord. Grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who set us the solitary in families, we commend to thy continual care the homes in which thy people dwell. Put far from them, we beseech thee, every root of bitterness, the desire of vainglory, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, 
virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who, in holy wedlock, have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children, and the hearts of the children to the parents. And so enkindle fervent charity among us all, that we may evermore be kindly affectioned one to another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. During the following musical offering, I invite you to make your own intercessions, petitions, and thanksgivings. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hath promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. A couple of quick announcements. Please be aware that the office will be closed tomorrow in celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, certainly everything we said in the sermon relates to Dr. King who understood that a healthy, just, Justice in a society comes from good relationships between all its people, where all are equal. Also, don't forget that our annual meeting will be Sunday, the 30th of January, and it will be virtual, and there will be several uh, bits of information about that coming out very soon, so watch your email. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us 
and remain with us forever. Amen.